Nightline continues from New York City with Cynthia McFadden. Self-reliance, it's a quality most important when times are tough, perhaps, and so in this recession, it may come as no surprise that more and more Americans are heading for the backyard, seed and spade in hand, ready to sow. The Victory Garden is back, and for Brian Rooney, it's a sign of the times. These are scallions. These are our carrots. Living in Venice, California, Tommy Rosen makes his living as a kind of echo entrepreneur. He can certainly afford to buy vegetables, but he likes growing his own in the backyard, too. We try to get as much into each square foot as possible. So you can notice that the spinach is bunched together. Different lettuces are bunched together with other lettuces. In backyards and public garden patches all across the country, growing vegetables and calling it a victory garden has become the latest thing. It's a victory over high food prices, a victory over going to the store, maybe even a small victory over global warming. So this is a green zebra. It's a green tomato. You eat it this way. Christy Wilhelmy started a company called Garden Nerd and teaches people how to farm their yards. It's an heirloom variety. It's sort of a, a union of patriotism and environmentalism where they come together to support the country by growing a little, dedicating a little bit of land in their own homes to growing their own food. She's got a green thumb and a green business. There are a few things that just about anyone can grow that will definitely succeed. Beets are one of them, and I grow them even though I hate beets because they have virtually no pests and diseases, and you just throw them in the ground and water them, and they come up and they're bright and pretty. There is a primeval satisfaction to watching things grow and knowing where your next meal is coming from. Of course, fewer people remember this, but the Victory Garden comes from the last century, World Wars I and II. Luscious raspberries are ripening. Patriotic Americans were called upon to grow their own fruits and vegetables so more could be sent to troops at the front. In the 1940s, as many as 20 million gardens grew 40 percent of the nation's produce. No work, no turnip, no tank, no flying fortress, no victory. Bear that in mind, all you victory gardeners, and work for victory. Now, in another time of national duress, the Victory Garden lives on in little plots all across the country. Of course, this is way cheaper than a hybrid car or a solar system. Chris Payne made the movie Who Killed the Electric Car? His house has solar power, and he drives only electric cars, although he didn't save any money on this one. But growing vegetables goes with his whole deal. In what sense is it a Victory Garden? Well, it's a victory over sort of this non-sustainable lifestyle we've all been living for years and years. If you think it's all just a little trendiness, consider this. The 133-year-old Burpee Seed Company reports that sales sprouted 30% last year and may shoot up another 20% this year. Among the best sellers, green beans, cucumbers, peppers, carrots, and squash. A $3 pack of tomato seeds can grow as much as $1,000 worth of store-bought tomatoes. No visit to the garden is complete without having some peas. They're delicious. And it brings quite a bit of relaxation and satisfaction, too. Just think of all those hurried trips to the grocery store you can avoid. I, I can't tell you how much joy I get from working in this garden. It's, I come out and I have quiet time by myself, just me and the, the vegetables that I'm growing. And at the end of the day, dinner is out there, just a few steps from the kitchen, and the joy of cooking your own. This is Brian Rooney for Nightline in Venice, California. Small victory, but a victory nonetheless. Brian Rooney reporting.